Have you ever wondered about those who dream of a better life versus those who create it? Are you waiting to accomplish your dreams and goals? Welcome to Create It Now with your hosts, Jonathan Stone and Dawn Elizabeth. For the next 60 minutes, we're going to put your dreams into motion and create it now. Now. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host and create it now. now. Here is Jonathan Stone and Don Elizabeth. Hello and welcome to the Create It Now radio show. Today I'm in studio with Jonathan Stone, myself, Don Elizabeth, and Magic Al Jensen. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Don Elizabeth, doing great. Thanks for asking. Excellent. And Magic Al, thanks for joining us today. I love being in studio with you and uh, especially today getting a chance to talk with Jonathan Stone a little bit. One yes. of my favorite subjects. Yeah, I can understand <laughs> why. You've been waiting every week to do this. I'm like, please interview me today. Integrity Gaming. That's what I want. That's what I live for. Perfect. Okay, we have his permission to yeah. interrogate him. Nice. Okay, up against the wall. Spread them. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. This yeah. time the check better not bounce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today we're going to get to know Jonathan a little bit more, yeah. ask him some questions, find out more about where he came from, what he's been doing, and the mind behind the, the Create It Now media. All right. Yeah, so it'll be That's fun. Scary. So thanks for being a part of that, Ma- Magic Al. Thanks for inviting me. Always enjoy being in studio with you. The door's cool. always open. All right. And <laughs> don't let the screen door hit me on the way out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and did you guys know today is Boss's Day? I heard that. Oh, yes. Yeah. So those of you who have a boss, if you are have not brought a gift into work, you may need to take a second run to the local store make a quick uh, restroom yes. break and run across the street and see pick what you can pick something get. up a card flowers chocolate new car ooh that might take more <laughs> than a bathroom break <laughs> but i think also that we should talk about like bosses that you know housewives and mothers the boss of their household as well taking care of children and stuff so i think Absolutely. husbands should go out and bring home flowers and stuff yeah and be your own boss too not about going out creative but be your own boss and decisions you make in your life. So I think everybody out there is a boss of their own choices and their own destination. Very nice. Wow, so that's that's pretty deep. It was. Are we going to be this deep with the entire show? <laughs> I'm trying it until the interview. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. So really, he just gave us permission to go buy ourselves something. Exactly. Excellent. <laughs> I can handle because that. Because you don't like shopping, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Well, thanks for that permission. I appreciate it. Yeah, so we're going to talk about some tips on how to get along better with your boss and make your day a little easier to get through each day. Always a good idea yes. to have a boss who uh, who likes you. Right. It's always yeah. a plus. Yeah. yeah, you want to be on his good side or yeah. her good side. Absolutely. You want to be on the boss's good side. Yeah, a lot of times when I travel around and I do the different seminars, one of the things I come across are people who – have a really hard time getting along with their boss Mm -hmm. and so we do a very a long segment in regards to how to get along with your boss to make it so our day is easier to get through right right you know because if you have to deal with that person whether it's a boss or not just somebody in your life that is more difficult to deal with how to deal with that type of person so that you can get through your day so it's easier for you and less stressful for you right i think we should have some tips for bosses as well I think a lot more bosses need to ask their employees, what do they want? What are they looking for? What inspires them? You know, that communication back and forwards instead of just the employee looking at the boss. And I think people will get a lot of benefit out of that. Oh, you are you are absolutely right. I know that I've had a number of employees in the past. And, and any time I had difficulty with an employee, if they weren't living up to my expectations, before I would call them in and say, you know, what's wrong with you and how come you're not doing this, I would look at myself and ask myself, did I – have I presented the employee with a detailed explanation of what it is that I expect them to do? Do they know what I want? And then have I given them the tools? Have I given them the training? Have I given them the support that they need in order to carry out their job? And I ask those questions all the time before I would call someone in and have a discussion with them because 
I wanted to look at it from their perspective. If right. I'm going to call them on the carpet and they're going to come in and say, well, you know what? You never really made it clear what you expected out of me. You never really gave me the appropriate training. You never gave me the tools and uh, the environment. Then, um, you know, as a boss, you have to be, I think, uh, held accountable right. for, uh, so, for creating the environment that, that can allow them to be successful. Right. So it needs to be a two-way street. Oh, I absolutely. think the employee needs to know what's expected of them. Sure. The boss needs to tell them. But I think the employees... People need to actually have good communication with their boss and, you know, find out exactly what is expected of them. Sure. If they have an issue, don't be scared to, you know, discuss it. I'm not saying, you know, write letters, react crazily or anything Mm -hmm. like that, but just communication is really important. Sure. And you have to be able to take the other party's temperature, I think, on a regular basis. From an employer, from the boss's standpoint, you have to be able to have a, an open relationship with your employees to the point where you can say, listen, how's things going? You know, are, are you satisfied? Are you growing? Are you challenged? Do you have the tools? Are you accomplishing what you want to accomplish? Is this a, a satisfying and rewarding track that you're coming along? And then from the employee's standpoint, they have to be able to have the confidence to sit down with the boss and say, am I fulfilling what it is that you expect of me? Have things changed in, in what's coming down the road? And, you know, are we on the same path together? No, definitely. It's a great. Um, the other thing that I find now, like a lot of my friends that are in the technology industry on Fridays, they actually have celebratory days with mm-hmm. the bosses and everybody. Um, one of my friends, his boss took the whole team to uh, Mexico and he made everybody wow. get certified scuba diving, paid for everything. Uh, it's just it's amazing because I think with the way the economy's going and there's less and less people that are actually being employed mm-hmm. in a certain company, um, it's right now that rapport between the boss and yourself. So a lot of bosses, like I know in Los Angeles, um, are really trying to connect and have that connection oh, with their absolutely. employees, and make it a fun environment. And if you're a good employer, I think you do those kind of things. You realize that your employees are the uh, the human resources that you have to make a success out of your business concept. And if you don't have employees that are on the same page, that are pulling at the same rate as everyone else, pulling their own weight and being a part of the team, then um, you know you can't hope to succeed. All right, and you got to work with positive people. That's my whole new thing now. It's just no more negative people. Try to cut everything out. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot. I mean, negative people just, it just brings you down. It's yeah. just, it, you and know. in some situations, unfortunately, like you can't necessarily get rid of the negative people, but being, finding a way to change your attitude so that they'll be influenced by it and change their attitude. Yeah, you can as well. create right. a positive yes. environment, mm-hmm. a positive attitude environment that's based on, you know, let's, um, let's work together and let's look for the positive things. You know, everything isn't going to be perfect all the time. So all we as, as bosses can do is create an environment that's conducive to the employees uh, you know, having a positive desire to want to help support the, uh, the corporate mission. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And teamwork is really important. Yeah, and so we're going to talk about some tips and tools and tricks after we interview Jonathan. All right, I <laughs> and like the sounds of that. some more on that conversation. And before we do interview Jonathan, we're going to give him a quick breathing break. So he's ready for his interrogation. And we are going to take our quick break. You're listening to the Create It Now radio show. Don't forget to find us on Facebook or Twitter at Dream It, Create It, and become a part of the conversation. And we will be right back. From the entertainment capital of the world, listen to On Stage in Vegas on the fourth Thursday of each month at 9 p.m. right here on KLAV. You'll hear interviews, stories, and valuable life and business lessons from performers, producers, and directors who have created success on stage in Vegas and around the world. Join me, Big Magic Al Jensen and Michelle Roxy Davis, as we bring you stories from the stage that are guaranteed to inspire, motivate, and entertain. If you can't make it live, log on to VegasAllNetRadio.com to find show archives and bonus interviews. Either way, we look forward to seeing you on stage in Vegas. 
We're blowing it out at Gene Woods Racing Experience, Las Vegas' newest premier outdoor adrenaline-powered gasoline go-karting track with speeds in excess of 45 miles per hour if you've got the balls. We've got two-for-one Tuesdays. Buy one and your friend rides free. We've got $5 off coupons. And remember, on your birthday, members ride free. And they get a free Gene Woods Racing Experience t-shirt. Open Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. till 11 Saturday and Sunday, noon till 11. And we're located at 121 East Sunset Road and Las Vegas Boulevard at the Sports Center across from McCarran Airport. Come blow the doors off your competition at Gene Woods Racing Experience. Once you race here, you won't go anywhere else. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Welcome back to Created Now. Now. Join the conversation at 702-731-1230 or email create at creatednowmedia.com. Here again, your hosts, Jonathan Stone and Don Elizabeth. Welcome back to the Create It Now radio show and happy Bosses Day to everybody out there as you should be the boss of your own lives. So congratulations, this is your day. Yes, indeed. Yes. And we are going to have a an interview of Jonathan Stone, get to know him a little bit more, and in leading the interrogation, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> All right, up against the wall. Okay. Investigation, our... Mr. Magic Al Jensen. So, Magic Al, why don't you take it away? I sure will. Thank you so much, Don Elizabeth. I, again, appreciate the opportunity to come in and be part of the Create It Now show. I am a frequent listener. Uh, I can't say I listen every single day because I actually have a show yes. that uh, conflicts with yours on one day of the week, but I listen as often as I can and love the guests that you have. And uh, I think probably the reason that you asked me to come in today was because I keep asking you questions about the people that you're working with. Yes. And uh, I, I have way more questions than you are probably able to answer. And I wanted to know more about Jonathan Stone. Because, Jonathan, I'll be honest, I hadn't bumped into you here in Las Vegas, and not that I know everybody in Las Vegas by any means, but have, uh, have been in a few circles uh, around Las Vegas and would have expected to, uh, to bump into you, but you're relatively new to uh, yes, Las Vegas uh, yourself, is that right? That is correct, yeah. So what brought you to Las Vegas? What brought me to Las Vegas, um, actually my folks, brought my folks out to Summerlin, uh -huh. uh, still living in... Uh, the Hollywood Hills and um, I would just come back and forward and stuff and I had a place in Huntington Harbor as well and I've been in the entertainment industry uh, in Southern California of, in Southern California majority mm -hmm. of my life and I came out here and they live by the Red Rock Mountains as well okay and it was kind of like a, a sabbatical almost like starting over just peaceful mm -hmm. um, in LA you're just always running and going and fortunately the companies that I'm working with now they're worldwide and national, and um, I can be anywhere. So it was kind of a time for reflecting and stuff. So I mm -hmm. just kind of packed everything up and just moved out here. Well, I can understand that. Having spent about 10 years in Southern California, I lived in the Santa Clarita area, but I had offices in Encino nice. yeah. and in Valencia, then up in the Antelope Valley as well. That is a, a hectic pace that uh, Southern Californians carry on. Right, and the traffic out here is much better. I mean, in L.A., <laughs> you're going to drive 20 miles. It'll take you two and a half hours right. here. 20 miles is 20 miles. Yeah. You know, it takes you 20 minutes, which is <laughs> amazing. Now, when everybody says to me, oh, my God, I live so far, it's 20 minutes away. Yeah. You're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. That's like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Seriously. Like, exactly. I, it would take me two and a half hours in L.A. Oh, I, I <laughs> totally relate to that. I really, really do. Now, when I am out speaking or doing any kind of a program, one of the things that I like to make certain that my audience understands right up front is why I'm standing in front of the room, what qualifies me to be a speaker or a leader on a particular topic. And I'm going to assume that listeners to the Create It Now show you know, have a similar question in their minds. What qualifies Jonathan Stone to be behind the microphone and sharing his insights and his expertise? So tell us a little bit about the other projects that you've been involved in uh, in your adult life and uh, and specifically i want to hear about real wisdom tv okay well 
I've been working with a lot of motivational speakers and authors for quite a few years and started with a technology company and a 3D interactive company and um, I had a good friend of mine in Los Angeles, Michael Roban, who executive produces quite a few movies and he was actually a guest on our show. He's done everything from Stallone movies, Jason Statham movies, Haunted House. And I also work with a lady named Gail Kingsbury, who's one of the biggest bookers out there. She's booked everybody from the Dalai Lama to Richard Branson. And I was introduced to her through Les Brown. Okay. Which is pretty amazing. And um, we, I told Michael, I was actually, it was a year ago in December, I was out here visiting, came to a conference. So Kyle Cease was doing an event out here. And Gail was here, and I called Michael, and I'm like, you should come out here. Let's check it out. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been in the entertainment industry for a long time, and I wanted, I've always wanted to make a difference and make change. Mm hmm and also let me back up a little what i saw about all the speakers and authors and stuff a lot of people didn't understand about residual income and being in the entertainment industry um, one of the things that we all love and know is residual income sure you do you create something once and then sell it over Over and over and over 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 again. again and so seeing less one time and then less is ill um i would worry about him and start thinking like how if he doesn't speak he doesn't make money you know, Les always has to speak to make money, and he's got, you know, kids, and he, he takes care of a lot of responsibilities. Sure. And I really, I care so much for Les, and so I really learned, you know, that these people don't have an, a clue on the residual income part. Mm-hmm. So I created this subscription model, and that's when I asked Michael um, to come out here and join me and come see what this is all about, because The Secret was really large as well, the movie, and... Through, we have a lot of channels of distribution of a lot of feature films and different things like that in the positive arena. So Michael came out here, and then Gail, Michael, and I all sat around and we talked about it and said, you know, all these people have so much content as of right now. Mm-hmm. Why don't we launch a network? And um, just with all the context that we know, we created this con- uh, network called Real Wisdom TV, which we go to Hulu at first and then in the middle of launching with Hulu and we got Brian Tracy involved and tons of all the biggest speakers to give us a lot of content and stuff which so is out there. what you're saying is it's essentially a video on demand kind of a service a video on demand um, it, we're kind of like the HBO for motivational positive oh, okay. wellness uh, that whole the whole industry all right. Yeah. So again, we have uh, Les Brown is was one of the Brian Tracy inspiration and in Brian Tracy. Yeah. Who else do you feature? Because I know that uh, on Real Wisdom TV, you really like to focus on uh, wellness, wealth, and wisdom. Right. We have everybody from Marion Williamson um, to Joe Polish, Jim Quick's coming on there. Wyland, we just got the rights to. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of his stuff. The artist, um, the artist Wyland. Right. Yes, formerly known as Wyland. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we have, no, it's quite a bit. Every day we are uploading content. We have so much content that's out there, uh, that is out there that it, we are loading up. All right. So if our listeners want to check out Real Wisdom TV, where do they go to do that? They go to www.realwisdomtv.com. And then right now we're on uh, YouTube and the subscription channels. Uh, at the beginning of the year, YouTube decided they want to compete with Netflix and Hulu. Mm-hmm. So they were giving away 30 subscription channels. And you had to fill out all these forms and submit to it. So we actually got one of the channels. Nice. So, yes, and it's worldwide. Um, we're actually featuring in 10 countries. And now our next step is we'll be on Hulu. We're planning on by the fourth quarter of this year. And then from there, from DirecTV, Roku, and all the boxes. Okay, so is uh, Michael Roban still involved then? Yes, everybody is still involved. And Gail Kingsbury? Gail Kingsbury and Jonathan Barbado. Okay. Who's now uh, from Ap- Apricot Corp. He was the head of MGM and Stars. Okay. Yeah, so. Very good. I have an so amazing team of people. I'm very fortunate. These, these guys are just wonderful, and they make things happen well i think that's a wonderful uh business tip right there is uh surround yourself with quality people yes and when you do that it makes uh it makes business success so much easier don't you think oh absolutely i mean i my last company and stuff was just this is a fiasco um a lot of times when you raise money i don't know you've you've raised money i've uh, I've raised a buck or two in my day so when you know about raising money and stuff 
there's these venture capitalists or angel money mm -hmm. and angel money is, has a lot of emotion behind it. Yes. So you can create this whole business plan and then all of a sudden the people that have put up all the money, the financing and stuff go, Oh no, no, we should take it in this direction. And mm -hmm. then everything changes and all these tempers flare and it's just not so much fun. All of a sudden you're the CEO and then you lose control. I understand. I understand that uh, that certainly can be a challenge. Now, take us back to where it all began. I know that uh, that you were born in New York, but I you really born. were were uh, went through school and raised in Los Angeles. Yeah, so I was born in New York. Um, then I came out here. I think when I was like ten or eleven, um, go back and forwards. But yeah, I grew up in L.A. in Orange County actually, and I graduated high school when I was sixteen years old, and basically went on the road doing. I was working and then also doing stand up. Okay, so uh, went on the road. When you say working, uh, I mean is that something? Well, I had a whole bunch of little. I mean, can we talk jobs? about that? I mean, sure, <laughs> we could do that. I actually I worked at FedEx for a little bit. I actually worked at this place fixing altimeters for airplanes. Really, little biplanes and stuff. <laughs> and I, these were the old altimeters, not from the new planes. So these were the old fashioned planes. Mm -hmm. And we'd have to take them apart. I don't even know how I got this job. It was this crazy old guy, but it was awesome. <laughs> and we'd have to take these help, these things apart and get all these parts that he got and then put them in a pressurized little thing that looked like a microwave mm -hmm. back then. And you'd go up with the pressure to see if the altimeters work and stuff like that. Okay. It was, it was kind of neat. Yeah, so did that. Worked as a mechanic for a while. Worked with my dad. Uh, tell us about your dad. What I know that he was uh, was an influence in your life. Yes, and he what, still is. What did he do, or does he still do for a profession? Well, my dad's an electrical contractor, but he came to the United States um, with like two hundred dollars in his pocket from and from Israel. Okay, and, um, he's originally from Romania, Transylvania. Really? Yeah. So a lot of people go, no, that place really doesn't exist. No, it, it, does it really does exist. <laughs> um, yeah, my parents were young. They got married. Uh, they came out here. And um, $200 in his pocket, and he built the American dream of just he's the most tenacious man I've ever met. Never gave up. Just so pushed, immigrated pushed, probably pushed. to the New York City area. To New York City. And yeah. that's, uh, of course, where you were born and started his electrical contracting business. No, he was a taxi cab driver and worked ah. for like, he worked for the unions in different um, places. Con Ed, I believe, in New York. So he didn't get hit, he did not become a contractor until California. Did he have a, a background or education in electrical engineering before he came to this country, or did he accomplish that while he was here? Uh, no, I believe it was probably back in Israel. He was in the Israeli army and stuff, okay. so I think it was schooling and all that kind of stuff. You know what? I've never really sat down and said, really? where did you get your formal education Never from? had that discussion, yeah, huh? Yeah, but he is amazing at what he does. Hey, well, Mr. Stone, if you're listening today, 702-731-1230, <laughs> give us a call. We'd like to hear from you. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's funny. Yeah. I've never actually sat down and go, where did you learn? It just, it almost seems like second nature to him. Sure. And my dad, even at his age now, he could run up a ladder quicker than any of us, stand on one foot, 20 foot ladder, fix things, tear things apart. Just, it's amazing to watch him. I mean, he, all right. He in fact, a lot. I've got some light bulbs in my place need taken care of. So maybe if you can, can afford him, him, he'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I'm the only child, so it's all my inheritance. I see. Yes. I see. Now, you had told me earlier that, uh, that your father exhibited a tenacious nature and that when he set his mind to something there was no stopping him is that right no absolutely i agree and that's why i admire him so much for that um he's just just always provided always um was an amazing giver very supportive uh, just but like when work was slow he would be on that phone all day every day working it just huh? working it working it calling people like let me come in let me do this let me do that uh-huh and um, he built a huge uh, business, electrical contracting business. And we were talking about bosses day. So I know if he's listening, he's probably going to kill me about this. But my dad is one of the funniest bosses. He fires everybody every day. But he's like, <laughs> be back at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> so he would get angry. if people. So people didn't know in the beginning when they worked with my dad if they were really fired or not. So some people would show back up the next day. And he was like, no, I fired you. And other people would be like, just come back into work. You know, they, they wouldn't know because he – yeah, he would, you know, he's a perfectionist when it comes to what he does. Uh -huh. and people screw around or like, hey, whatever, he would fire them. Reminds me of uh, George Burns firing Harry Von Zell on every uh, episode of uh, the, uh, the George Burns, Burns and Gracie Burns. Allen show. 
<laughs> but uh, so in addition to your father, I know that you've had some other people in the Los Angeles area specifically who have been big influences in your professional life. Tell us about uh, Irving Azoff. Well, Irving Azoff from Azoff Management, who started from the Eagles to Live Nation, ran Live Nation, Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, he was actually a huge influence because he, he told me, he had sent me up with meetings about a TV show once, and uh, quite a few times. He became my mentor. And I went to NBC for the show. We're not going to talk about the name of it right now, but um, The Ringmaster. But it was a show about anyway, nothing, right? Yeah, no, it was a variety <laughs> show. Oh, okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was Seinfeld. Um, so then I needed to call him after the meeting. And the meeting didn't go that great. He was in the hospital. He couldn't make the meeting. So I call him, and they put me through to his hospital bed. And he's laying there. And I, I just called his office to let them know. And they put me right through to his hospital bed. He's like, how did it go? You know, I just got through surgery. I'm like, ah, you know what? You weren't here. Just just didn't have that energy. And he's like, well, just say, he said, screw it. It only takes one yes. Never give up. It only takes one yes. Wow. Now that is very profound. Yeah. Yeah. From his hospital bed. And I was just like, wow. Yeah, absolutely. It, it changed my life in a way because it's, it's back what my father does. It's just never give up. Just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And I think that's why I come up with all these crazy ideas about like the radio stuff and the TV thing, but it's mm-hmm. just, and people go, oh my God, you're going to start a network? And it's like, yeah, why not? Exactly. You know what? It just takes one yes. And so, actually, so back to that real quick and how the network got launched. So, so we got Michael involved and uh, Gail, she reached out to her contacts. I reached out to mine. Michael reached out to his. We got Bob Gravitas who released The Secret. Um, and then from there, we got the whole distribution and everything built, the pipeline. And it was just, wasn't given up. It just, it's possible. You know, that's the whole thing. It's possible. If you can dream it, you can believe it, you can make it happen. And that's what I do. I mean, and going through good times and bad times. I mean, I've been extremely successful, and I've had rough patches, and it's just coming back. Well, let's talk about that. Up. I mean, and I don't, I don't need to have the details, but, um, but talk a little bit about the rough patches and how they maybe have helped to influence you to a, a greater level of success. Learning to keep more control and not being as emotionally involved and not reacting as much and also surrounding myself with really amazing people i mean i've made a lot of money and i've lost a lot Mm -hmm. um this last round i went through was actually to be honest and which taught me the most my parents probably gonna kill me for this but it was a lot about ego because as i left my other company which is still there um and i was making great money and everything I was still keeping two places because one up in the hills and one on the beach. And I was like, I, I can bring it back. I can bring it back. Mm-hmm. Instead of when everybody, even my landlord at my other place and my family, everybody's like, just cut your ties. Don't worry about it. Just take a lot of cash. And, and just, you know what? You got enough money to live really comfortably for uh-huh. a while, you know, until you figure everything out. I'm like, no. You know, I get four, two places and this, that, and the other. And, um, and every month it was just like more and going and going without it coming sure. in. And it had a lot to ego, ego. So now it's just about rebuilding, surrounding myself with really positive people, being tenacious, waiting for some calls with real wisdom, and doing it smart now instead of rushing, being stupid. And actually coming out here, like I said, it was like a sabbatical. But it's time. And it also made me park because I got burned. You know? So I was kind of scared again to go back out. Sure, that's understandable. I found that, you know, I have been uh, very successful in business and in life, and I've also had, uh, you know, some some valleys to go along with those peaks. And I personally think that, you know, you can't appreciate the uh, the good times unless you've got the contrast yes. of the bad times to uh, to put it up against. Agreed. So uh, it sounds like you have had uh, your your share of the valleys, but uh, certainly for the most part have uh, have ridden the peaks and have had some wonderful. Uh, influences along the way, including uh, your father, uh, Irving Azoff, uh, Les Brown, Michael Roban, Gail Kingsbury. So uh, I think you've uh, established uh, some really good business insights here today, and that is surround yourself with quality people, look up to people who have been there. Never give up. That you can glean success from, and it only takes one yes, so never give up until you get that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And knowing about all the different peaks that you've hit, just knowing when you hit a peak you can always get back to that peak and beyond Absolutely. you know and so just always continuing to build to get back up yeah no and this time 
we haven't peaked yet. We're just starting. All Absolutely. right. With creative. I like, I like that. Sounds that. that. Good. And with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and come back and talk about how to get along with your boss and how to how bosses can get along with their employees as well. You're listening to the Create It Now radio show. Find us at www.createitnowmedia.com and we will be right back. The best television isn't on television. It's on the internet. Log on to realwisdomtv.com for thousands of hours of motivational and inspiring content. On demand all the time. Unlike network television with its sex, drugs, and rock and roll, realwisdomtv.com provides wellness, wealth, and wisdom. From how to read faster to creating greater wealth, realwisdomtv.com is for you. The learning never stops, and neither does realwisdomtv.com. Log on now to realwisdomtv.com. Dot com. Hey, it's Roxy from the 702 Rock Show right here at VegasAllNetRadio.com. Listen to my show every Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. to hear about local artists, musicians, fashion designers, and more right here in Las Vegas. So tune in every Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. to hear me, Michelle Roxy Davis, right here at VANR on the 702 Rock Show. Create it now. Now. Continues. Join the conversation at 702-731-1230 or email create at createitnowmedia.com. Here again, your host, Jonathan Stone and Don Elizabeth. Welcome back to the Create It Now radio show. If you are just tuning in, we just had Magic Al Jensen, who was interviewing Jonathan Stone, getting to know a little bit more about his background, his motivation, as well as really his influences and how we got to be where he is today. And we are going to talk about how it is Boss's Day today and how you can get along better with your boss or your employees. And earlier, I really liked the idea, Al, that you were talking about how bosses themselves, like you had done, being able to make sure that they're giving the correct expectations, the correct training, and the correct tools to the employees to make sure that it's easier for them also on that end of it. Right. I mean, uh, the employer-employee relationship is a two-way street. The employees can only give their best if they know what's expected of them. Mm -hmm. If they've had the initial training, if they have the tools, the support network, and and, and if they're surrounded with uh, an environment that is conducive to accomplishing their objectives as an employee, then they can do it. But if the employer doesn't provide that kind of environment, then I think he or she only has themselves to blame for the failure of their employees. And having themselves to blame is always the hardest piece for them. Oh, yeah, because when you're a boss, it's yep. like you're infallible. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, I work so hard to become the boss. Don't tell me what to do. Right. But if you can get over that. And Jonathan brought up a, a real big uh, point earlier about ego. And bosses, I think, are typically... Uh, in, encased in ego because they have paid the price they've got the education they've invested all the money and the time and the effort and and they're kind of up here on this pedestal looking down at everybody but if they can get rid of the ego and realize that they are just a tool that the company is using to help lead to manage to inspire the workforce if they can get rid of that ego and work in conjunction with the employees then i think they have a real good chance for success absolutely yeah i agree and one of the the phrases I've heard, I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but a good leader or a good boss is somebody who will give out all the accolades to their employees and their team when something goes well, but they'll take the blame when something goes wrong. And working with different people across the country, I just find that it's really hard for people on both ends, bosses and employees, to take that personal responsibility when they need to they are always blaming each other. Yeah. I work with the bosses who are blaming their employees and the employees who are blaming their bosses. I don't think it stops. But it's kind of like being a general in the Army. I mean, about taking responsibility and taking control and 
uh, molding these people and their lives and putting their lives in the line. So I think as a boss, they really need to make sure these people are prepared and prepped and know exactly what they're getting into. Because I think a lot of people, it's like, okay, we'll just leave it with human resources and then leave it with this person and this person. Nobody knows. There's, there's like a whole, that circle is broken. Mm-hmm. And so that communication and they just, nobody knows. And it's, everybody likes to play the blame game absolutely. in the corporate world. I mean, I'm sure you've seen that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, I'm just going to cover my butt so, um, so I don't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's a tough thing being a boss. I mean, being a boss is, is more than just telling people what to do. It's uh, understanding leadership. It's understanding that your employees, that the, your charges, the people who are there to help accomplish the objectives that you're charged with, it's making certain that you understand what they're all about, what makes them tick, why do these people come to work every day, and am I able to create an environment that is conducive to their own personal growth, that they're going to enjoy what they do, that they're going to feel safe and they're going to feel secure, that they know that they're going to be rewarded for playing their part in the department or the overall company's success. So uh, a boss is more than just, uh, you know, cracking the whip and telling people where to go and what to do. I think a boss is uh, a quality boss is able to inspire their people to rally around uh, a cause and make certain that everybody understands what they're doing to help the company accomplish their objectives. And at the same time, they're able to accomplish their objectives as an employee. Yeah. And w- the way the economy is going now, like especially in Los Angeles, at, um, from like record labels, movie studios, uh, radio and stuff, when like 10 years ago you would go in there and every desk was full and people were right. just going crazy and things were partying and everybody's happy and it was just a good old time and now you go in there it's like a ghost town because mm-hmm. what they did was they took a lot of assistance and they said hey basically your boss was getting two hundred thousand dollars you know how to do the job you're getting forty thousand we'll give you a hundred thousand take their job and your job mm-hmm. and now all this responsibility is being dumped on these people and so that's why in LA there was so much going on because all these executives and stuff were getting axed out and their assistants and stuff were made with double responsibility. And they were so excited. They're like, oh my God, I just got promoted. Sure. And now if you, you go to some of the places, uh, the offices are filled by some of the old assistants and stuff like that. So it's, I, yeah. I understand that completely. Back when I had a, a day job, and this goes back a few years, living in Denver, Colorado, making a very nice living, doing a particular job for a a franchise corporation. And the franchise corporation got sold out to a a big time competitor. And the big time competitor Mm -hmm. came in and said, uh, you know, we don't need to be paying you the amount of money we're paying you. We can take your assistant who's basically been doing your job anyway (laughs) and and pay that person, you know, 40% of what we're paying you. And uh, I found myself out in the street. Right. And the assistant was probably excited because they thought it was this great opportunity. Yeah. So they make this nice package of stuff, and they're saving a ton of money. Exactly. And, yeah, the executives are gone. I, you know, Sorry to say, but, I mean, you saw it. I mean, it's, this is what happens yes. on a daily basis. So, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't matter. And even being a boss at that time, you have to look over your shoulder as well. So that's why I think communication is key, and there's a lot of restructuring going on. So make sure, you know. That's why I said earlier, be the boss of yourself to make right. sure you have your stuff. Be accountable, you know, to yourself. But Don Elizabeth, you travel all around speaking to companies mm-hmm. and different things like that. What kind of advice do you have for people? A lot of times we talk about how making sure that everybody's valued, making sure that everybody within the organi- organization is there for a reason and what they bring as their specifics to the to the group and company. And we also talk about different personalities and how to get along with the different personalities. So if it's somebody you have to deal with, whether it's an employee or a coworker or your boss, you can find ways to communicate properly with them so that those lines of communication can become open as opposed to continually, you know, hit a brick wall every time you see that person, you know, because there's always that one person that when they come down the hall, you hide, you turn your lights off, you sure. hope they don't see uh-huh. you, and you don't want to talk to them. But finding ways to really communicate with those people. Like what ways? Like what happens if somebody keeps constantly hitting a brick wall? If somebody's so stubborn and they're just not treating somebody fairly, how do you break through that? What, what, do you have any recommendations? 
Well, the main thing is to know kind of what where they come from, what type of personality they come from. I like to use the DISC personality, where they have the drivers, the influencers, the supporters, and the analytics. And each of those personality types crave different type of communication. So, for example, a lot of bosses will fall into the director type, somebody who likes to take charge, who wants things done specifically, who will delegate out and just wants you to get the job done. And we call that a high D, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I remember and a lot of bosses that. fall into that. Yeah, go ahead. No, when we first met, uh, you and then AJ at the time, you're like, you're an I D. Yeah. Four, six, eight, three. I'm like, you're what? A high D, you're a high no, D, low yeah, S. Yeah, I don't know what they were calling <laughs> right. me, but they were like, yeah, you're a... And then they were having this whole conversation, and I was like, I'm right here. And they were yeah. like, no, I think he's a D. No, I think he's an I with a little S with a... He's a high D, a, sub yeah. high I, yeah. Yeah. low yeah. S, yeah. sub C. A lot of bosses yeah. fall into the D category mainly, and sure. it's because they are the ones who are taking charge and getting things done. And it, when I use it in a large group, we'll, we'll actually take a only five question test and it shows everybody where they fall whether they're the driver the influencer the supporter or the analytic person and then we talk about what it is they need in order for people to communicate with them so people who fall under the driver they say they want people to come to them knowing their facts and getting right to the point be direct and let's get yes. to it no so if you're going to talk to your boss who is in that type going into their office and being like, hey, I really just um, have a question. No, they've already stopped listening to you at that point. So you want to make sure you know exactly what you're going to say and you go in and you just say it, ask it, whatever it is. Matter of factly. And they're going to to be a lot more receptive to you, your thoughts, your ideas, because you are communicating to them the way they need to be communicated with. I actually heard a story about that. Donald Rumsfeld. who was a not Secretary of State? He was the uh, to the president. Okay, don't, don't uh, ask okay. me. Okay, um, <laughs> I, I was anyway, I missed class that day. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Donald Rumsfeld, uh, people would come send him emails, and he would actually reply, send them back, and cut out so many of the words of that email that they had sent because it was just like matter of the fact. He works for the president, the one his right hand person, chief of staff. Chief of staff. Okay. Donald Rumsfeld was chief of staff for Bush. And that would be it. He'd want one line emails. Just boom, say it. Whatever the question is. And he would that's what he would do. He'd take out so many words. Get to the point. Yeah, no fluff. No time. The people who like the fluff are who fall under the supporters. Okay, well that's it for the Create It Now show. Thanks for listening. (laughs) That eighteen page email I just sent out. (laughs) We beat around the bush way too much. Let's get to the end here. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So and that's the opposite of the driver, somebody who is who wants that teamwork, who really if you say please and thank you to that person, it's gonna go a long way. Ask them how their family is before you ask them for a favor. And they're going to be easier to communicate with because you're satisfying their needs in communication. So falling into, Jonathan, how you always talk about communication is the key. Knowing other types of personalities and be able to recognize them quickly is going to be a lot easier for people to communicate with each other. Yeah, I think that's a key uh, component of a good quality boss one who is able to understand where their employees are coming from and the appropriate way to communicate with them. Because uh, if you are the high D and you are communicating with a, with a high S or C, mm-hmm. then you're definitely going to have to change your approach in order to get their cooperation on any given topic. Yeah, absolutely. And then let me just hit the other ones real quick. Influencer, which is what AJ and I believe that Jonathan falls into, is somebody who is the big picture idea and ideas man. Someone who really likes to motivate the group and get people excited about ideas. And that's where you fall into the mix, Jonathan, is just having those amazing ideas, but then needing to find other people to help move through it, help find people to push through and get the job done itself. And that's Mm -hmm. where analytic people fall into, are those who are detail-oriented. Right. Well, it looks like we have a caller. And... We do have a caller, but we are going to have to take a quick break first, and then we're going to bring our caller on for his question. So you are listening to the Create It Now radio show, where we are talking about getting along with other employees, bosses, and coworkers. If you want to join the conversation, find us on Facebook or Twitter at Dream It, Create It, and we will be right back.
Why wait to accomplish your dreams when you can create them now? It's time to put your dreams into motion. Create it now. Hi, this is Jonathan Stone with the Create It Now radio show on KLAV 1230 AM. Join us every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. We will help you move from a dream state to a create state. Become a part of a conversation on the Create It Now radio show about why some people dream it versus why other people create it. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on KLAV. Hi everyone, this is New Media Vegas, your Sin City Webmasters in Las Vegas, Nevada. More than just web design, complete integrated marketing with inspired innovations in delivery of your new media message, putting the groove and the backbeat back in your brand. The hottest in design trends with the latest innovations and marketing techniques. Call New Media Vegas at 702-517-0184. Or visit us online at www.newmediavegas.com. Don't forget to check out our online magazine, Sin City Presents. Featuring business, technology, fashion, dining, and entertainment news. 702-517-0184. 702-517-0184. Those who can do this is created now. Now. Join the conversation at 702-731-1230. Or email create at createitnowmedia.com. Here again, your host, Jonathan Stone and Don Elizabeth. Welcome back to the Create It Now radio show where we are talking about Bosses Day and how to get along with employees. And we do have a caller on the phone, so Steve is with us. Welcome to the Create It Now radio show, Steve. How are you? I'm good. I hope everyone's doing well. You have a very interesting show I wanted to say something. You said earlier about simplicity, and I think in some ways that actually the clarity is just as important as brilliance. Somebody can have a very uh, efficient way of explaining things clearly and simply, and maybe he doesn't have an IQ of 170, but he might be a great worker and be able to really uh, to make things like you say, the one-line email, or fix something quickly without going you know, through a lot of rigmarole. That's very, very important in business. Absolutely. Efficiency. You know, recently, I, I, the name of your show caught my ear because creativity. I designed or just a basic idea for learning programs for kids where they could build their own bridge across a river one step at a time, learn about engineering science. And I was so nervous to go to this company because they said, I thought it was unfinished. And the guy tells me, well, if you bring the idea in and it's still not fixed or done, it might be even better because we can assist you with it. So it gave me a lot of confidence because I felt like it was almost like going to a classic car show and a door is missing or a wheel is missing off the car. It wasn't finished. So what do you think of that idea, presenting a creative idea to an invention company that's not finished? <laughs> no, actually, Steve, I think that's great. And the reason is so many people would sit back and wait until mm -hmm. everything's complete. And then you know how we do that. We get into our own head and then we're like, right. you know, oh, it Negativity, won't be done. Yep. Exactly. And negativity starts k kicking in, and then we keep we never decide we're ready. Uh -huh. So, you know what? If you're three quarters of the way, just go for it, just make it happen, take action like you did. And so, what happened with that? We'd love to hear. Well, many years ago, I met a lady at an art show, and I asked her, Do you work on the strip? She says, No, I'm the I'm a principal of a high school, excuse me, an elementary school. So, I brought the idea to her. She invited the lady with the accelerated learning program. They were all enthused about it. Well, I got all involved with buying property, getting all messed up, and for four years, it sat and collected dust. In fact, the lady even called me to schedule another meeting with the accelerated learning program. I was going to give the idea away. Now, if someone was enthused and could program this, that's going to be the big expense, making it into user-friendly software. I'd give it away. But I just said, let me try one shot just to go to the convention company Present my idea and see if it's even got a shot, you know? What have I got to lose? You miss out on 100% of the chances you don't take in life, right? Absolutely. That's Babe Ruth's uh, biggest <laughs> line. Yeah. So are you guys in Vegas? Are you Vegas-based? We, we are. are. Well, uh, you, I'd like to tell my friends to go to your website because you have a very interesting and it sounds like enthusiastic crew. And if working with you people is anything like listening to you on the radio, I'd like to tell my friends about you. Excellent. Thank Please you. Please do. Our website is www.createitnowmedia.com. Createitnowmedia.com. Okay, and something else I just want to pass on to you, just a little piece of general information, if I could quickly. I know we're almost done Absolutely. with the show. Uh, they did a survey of kindergarten kids. This has been done a few times, I think, by, by teachers. 
And, and they said, do you think you're creative? And the kids say, yeah, I'm creative. I can do this and I can do that. Guess what? That's in kindergarten. By the time they reach high school, uh, over 90% of all people don't think they're creative. So somewhere between kindergarten and graduating high school, or be, excuse me, entering college, there's something that really needs to be done with the education system in this country. No, absolutely. And Steve, we'd like to hear more from you. So if you could actually email us as well at created at created now media.com. I get a better idea, sir. I'm an old dinosaur. You're going to die laughing. No computer. I'm very creative. I build things, make things. I build labor-saving devices. I do a lot of things. And um, But, you know, <laughs> I'm just not a computer person. I'd love to meet you guys one day in, in person and have a nice, you know, sit-down cup of coffee when you have time, which may be never, but <laughs> that would be the nicest thing of all. Absolutely. Excellent. How about this, Steve? Why don't you stay on the line because we do need to wrap up the show. So okay. stay on the line for us. We'll get your information and go from there if that sounds all right with you. Sounds wonderful. You guys have been very nice, and thank you for taking Thanks the time for calling, to talk Steve. to me. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thanks thank you. a lot, Steve. Have a great day. Thank you very good much. Good luck with your project. Thanks again, I, and good luck to you guys. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, Steve does bring up a, an amazing point. You know, when we're kids, there's so much more open to us, and we don't have those blocks. And as we get older, we create these blocks and perceptions in ourselves that hinder us from moving forward. Well, and I think one of those blocks is the fear of failure. Yes. We we are um, indoctrinated to to fear failing, and I think that is uh, is the biggest problem that we've got is is uh, instilling a fear of failure into our children today. Because if if they're afraid of failing, then they're going to be afraid to take a chance to to try something, and that's where the learning is when we when we take a chance, when we step in, and we we attempt to create it. Now we're going to do some things right. We're going to do some things that are not right, but the learning is in the experience of uh, of what we did. Yeah, right. and I Absolutely. like this point about. If you're not complete with it, stop waiting. I mean, we all do that. Just like with the radio show, if we would have waited for it to be completely perfect, we would have been waiting another be two waiting. years. You'd yeah. still yeah. be waiting, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And now we're pretty much close to perfect, so, you know, it was just trial and error now that we have Al with <laughs> well, us. Well, now that you're here, so. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, what about me? Hello? Oh, yeah, and Don. Well, Hello. I mean, I thought that went without saying. I mean, <laughs> right. you've been perfect from the, from the beginning. Thank you. Excellent. Yes. So, Jonathan, tell us tomorrow who we have on the show. Yeah, we have Bob Golden and Paul Shortino. Yes, Paul Shortino's coming in. Yes, from rating the rock. Oh Vault. my goodness, mm-hmm. you are very fortunate to have Paul Shortino coming in. That man is not only a, a tremendous musician, but the kindest, most warm yeah. uh, human being that you would ever want to know. He uh, he has some some life and business lessons that he can share that are unmatched right and we also we're going to talk about gratitude that's what our whole show is about tomorrow Mm -hmm. it's about gratitude with yourself and others being able to be thankful for what you have as well as thanking others in your life well i I for one i for one am thankful and 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 have a great deal of gratitude in my heart for having met and knowing paul shortino Wonderful. He is a delightful, delightful human being. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't met him. We've met Bob Golden, who's an amazing man, very kind, very caring, mm-hmm. has and a lot of wisdom. Paul's yeah, show. Yeah, we've seen Paul's show. I've seen it twice yes, now. So yeah, it'll so. be good to have him in studio. That'll be a lot of fun. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have today with the Create It Now radio show. Don't forget to find us online at www.createitnowmedia.com. Send us an email if you have any thoughts or questions and different concepts that you'd love us to talk about here on the radio show. Create at createitnowmedia.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at Dream It, Create It. And on the website... So you guys know, there's a place where you can click on the homepage to have a business shout out. If you would like us to talk about your business online and give you a shout out online as well as over air, give us, give you a shout out, go to the website, click the button and fill in your information so that we can announce you on air. So that's all the time we have today. Make sure you dream it believe it and make it happen have an amazing day thank you al You're thank welcome. you al thanks for having thanks me bye bye everybody for calling